Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to worship, and may God be with you. Thank you. So welcome if you are watching from across the country, down the street, or you are seated here in the sanctuary. Welcome if you are young, young at heart, or somewhere in between. Welcome no matter what your economic status is. Welcome whether you couldn't wait to get here this morning, if you're at home in your PJs, or you could barely get out of bed. Welcome if you are here every week, occasionally, never stepped foot in a church before, or somewhere in between. Welcome if you are gay, straight, transgender, or if you identify some other way. Welcome if you are single, married, divorced, partnered, widowed, or something else. Welcome no matter your body, shape, or size, physical, or mental ability. Welcome if you sing like the angels or not. Welcome because no matter who you are, where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And what's more here in this place, you are a beloved child of God. There are members of the worship team in the back of the sanctuary who can assist you should you need any type of assistance. Um, a little later on in the worship service, we'll be sharing our joys and concerns with one another. And to facilitate that, we have prayer slips for your use, which you will find in the back of the pew in front of you. Please take this opportunity to fill those out, and ushers will be by later to collect them. Our liturgist this morning is Ann Moriarty. And this morning's altar flowers are, is, are given in loving memory of our parents, Elmer and Hortense Paulette, and Arthur, Lois, and Olive Grimm, by Bob and Linda Paulette. A couple of announcements. Um, this afternoon at 5 o'clock, we will be hosting an interfaith service here in our sanctuary. Um, please, please join us. Um, it will be a lovely service and a way to enter Thanksgiving week. Um, there will be no um, coffee office hours on Tuesday um, at Cafe Serena. So if you are someone who, who uh, tends to join me on Tuesday mornings at Cafe Serena, please, you can go. Um, I will not be there. <laughs> um, and on Tuesday evening um, at, um, in Georgetown, we will be having an ecumenical service. So there is another opportunity to worship uh, and give God thanks before Thanksgiving. Information is in the bulletin. Today we will be collecting your pledge cards. Um, this is Stewardship Sunday, so um, hopefully you brought those with you and you can place them in the collection plate when that comes around. And a request to turn off your Wi-Fi settings on your phone, or probably the easiest thing to do if you would, just turn it off. We would appreciate that. It really interferes with the live streaming. It makes noise and it makes it difficult to stream for those people who are watching from home. Thank you. For those of you who are joining us in person this morning, we ask you to refer to your bulletin for other important announcements. And those of you watching from home, um, we refer you to our Friday email. If you don't receive our Friday email and you would like to, please go to our church website at www.grovelanducc.org and you can sign up there. It is also posted on our Facebook page immediately before worship on Sunday morning. And so now, as we light the candles and hear the ringing of the Paul Revere bell, let us take a deep breath, breathing in the breath and the Spirit of God as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
Please join me in the call to worship. We come together to worship and praise our heavenly parent. Hallelujah to our God. We acknowledge the need of the world for comfort and peace, our own and that of our sibling creation. Open our hearts, God. Open our eyes. We seek your wisdom and counsel. When we falter in lack of service to this world, God redeems us and sets us aright on the paths of righteousness. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of glory, as you shine your light into the darkness of our lives, guide our feet in the way of peace. As you shepherd your people, gather the lost and the scattered into the safety of your flock. Reign in our hearts as you do in the heavens that we may endure the struggles of this world with patience and fortitude. In the light of your radiant love, we pray. Amen. Siblings in Christ, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, rejoice. 
for God's love and forgiveness is for you. Amen. Epistle reading this morning is from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 28, from the New Revised Standard Version. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be reckoned as righteous by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female for all of you are one in Christ Jesus.
I love trees. You like when mom and dad read stories at night? Yeah. Yes, it's fun. Yeah. I used to do that with my children when they were little. So this book, this story is called I Am God's Dream by Matthew Paul Turner. That talk is not beautiful.
because all of my being has value in me, and I believe in my heart that God never stops dreaming. <clears throat> and these these pollinate. Yes, they do. Because God made me be, and right as can be, and the brilliance I bring will be hard to unsee. Yes, that's right. I am God's child. I am silly and wild. I am one of the billions of reasons God smiles. I'm, hmm? yeah. I'm courageous and true. I'm a dream God pursues. You might be surprised what God knows I can do. In me, yeah. When I look in the mirror, I can see what God sees. You can see yourself in water. It's a mirror. Yeah. Reflection. That's right. <laughs> wow. I've got a great vocabulary. You know lots of stuff. I'm not surprised because God made you that way. The human I know that God made me to be, I see my hands and my feet. I feel my heart make its beat. And in all that I am, I cleanse God within me. Chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official 
of the Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. O Holy One, pour out your Spirit wherever we are gathered or scattered. Have it move in, through, and among us, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds to hear what you would have us hear through this, your servant. Amen. So today is story time. Um, the story I just read to the children, that was, that was part one. Um, and now I have part two. It's, it's Thanksgiving, and um, it's, it's a lot of things today. It's the Reign of Christ Sunday, it's Thanksgiving Sunday, it's Transgender Day of Remembrance, it's a lot of things. And um, I was thinking, you know, there's no way I can incorporate all of that into a sermon um, that would last only 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 tops, and um, yeah, so I didn't want to hold you hostage today. So um, I decided that I wanted to read you this story. It's one of my favorite stories, and some, some of the teachers may know it. Um, it's called Stone Soup. Okay, <laughs> okay. So if you've heard it before, pretend you haven't and enjoy it. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit different maybe than the traditional one that you've heard, but it's still the same story and I think it's appropriate uh, for Thanksgiving and um, just in general. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Sue, asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, let's find out. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from so high above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine, floods, and war had made the villagers weary and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a scholar, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others, but they had little to do with one another. When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on a second door, and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. 
they placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing, she asked. We're gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire, said Hawk. We are making stone soup, and we need three round, smooth stones, said Sue. The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue, but this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the girl. And the little girl ran home. And as she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. The monks poked the coals. As smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire in the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper, said Hawk. That is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. The last time we had soup stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few, and off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Do you think it would be better with onions, said Hawk? Oh yes, maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads as the smell was very agreeable. But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several, vi several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and carrot cabbages. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we had dumplings, said one villager, and bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and mung beans and yams, cried some others, and taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried other villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out, and off they ran, returning all they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled how good it would taste, how, give, how giving the villagers had become. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steamed buns. They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink, and they lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for as long as anyone could remember. After the banquet, they told stories, sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making stone soup. Amen.
time in our worship service where we share our joys and concerns with one another and lift them up to God in prayer. Would the ushers please collect the prayer slips? O oh God, hear our prayers for the family of Irene Graff on her passing. Healing for Betty Newmeyer. For Sybil Mansfield as she approaches the end of her life. For Betty Newmeyer who has a heart issue and is being tested. A celebration welcoming Cheryl and back to the um, Cheryl is back to the chime choir. For the family of Allison Ballantyne on her death, happy birthday to Deb Stevenson. <laughs> uh, pray for Robert Moriarty recovering from shoulder replacement surgery. And um, today, as I mentioned earlier, is the, um, it's Transgender Day of Remembrance, and so let us pray for the families of 32 people who were murdered so far this year for being transgendered, most of them black women, 50% of them actually, 51%. And also I got up this morning to news that there was um, a shooting in Colorado, at Colorado Springs, uh, five people dead, 18 other people injured um, at a gay, at a gay uh, nightclub. Um, we have a long way to go. And um, we need to love and accept one another. And um, God made us all. God doesn't make mistakes. And um, let us be in prayer about all of these things. Let us spend some time with God in the silence of our hearts. O God of all hope, we come this day carrying with us the pains, the burdens, the joys and triumphs of the week gone by, as well as the worries and hopes for the week that is before us. We come, therefore, with prayers for others and ourselves. In a world where injustice is the daily experience of so many, we pray for hope. We pray that your kingdom would be an example for all those who ever and wherever they are, and all those who are tasked with governance. Guide all people towards truth and justice, whatever the personal cost may be, and the knowledge that this is what you call us to do for your glory and the benefit of all your people. In a time when our communities struggle with rising costs and ever more social isolation, we pray for unity for all to recognize the unique and wonderful people who surround them, and that we may all accept and rejoice in the variety of your wondrous creation that is called to work together for the good of all. As our churches continue to search for their place in a changed and changing society, we pray for the wisdom to follow your teaching, to hear your Son, to lean on your Holy Spirit for guidance and the reassurance 
that yours is a message that must be shared and one that the world is so in need of. Silence in this day, this week, we come with our own problems and worries, our own joys and desires, and we come in prayerful hope that your kingdom will be ever nearer to our lives, that you will help us and support us in our attempts to live as you have told us this day and in all days. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And now with grateful and generous hearts, let us bring our offering before God for the ministry and mission of Christ Church.
God of all, creator of all, giver of all, we bring before you gifts and tokens, signs of our commitment to your church, your world, your people. Though we know they are but little in the grand scheme, we pray that they may use for, be used for your glory and the good of all people in your name. Amen. worship is over but our service has just begun go into this new week with all the thanksgiving that you have in your heart and share your gratefulness and your love with each and every person that you encounter and go forth in peace amen <laughs>